Hello, everybody. Joseph Reed with Singing News. Hope you're doing well today. Thanks for joining us. And with me is one of gospel music's premier tenor vocalist. It's Ernie Haas of Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. Ernie, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing well, Joseph. Thanks uh, for asking. I hope you don't mind, but uh, it's a rare day in February in Stowe, Ohio, that I can sit outside. <laughs> and so even though I'm it's a little cold. I got my, my jacket on and I got my, my heater. Can you see it up there? Oh, yeah, I do see that. I love that. But yeah. I love getting outside. Yeah, one of those tower heaters. That works out good. And do you get a lot of inspiration by being outside? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, have, I always have. Um, you know, I mean, I remember when I was cutting grass as a kid and just my imagination would run wild. That, so that was before even having the Walkman, the Sony Walkman. Right. Just, just uh, building a tree house. Mm -hmm. um, just, just always outside. Mom and dad, could, my dad could whistle. You could hear him for two miles away when it was time for dinner, you know. But yeah, I just, I, I love being outside. I guess probably because I'm so cooped up in a bus and airplanes, mm -hmm. you know those kind of things so much that if I can ever get outside, I'm, I'm there. You know, when I was younger, we spent most of our childhoods outside, Ernie. I mean, we, uh, even in, in the winter, regardless of the season, we were, we spent a lot of time outside. I, I don't think I see as much of that in this generation as uh, when we were younger. There's so many things like the laptop and like this right here, you know, you just, mm. you know, you just, everybody's just like that all the time. I, I talked to my niece, Carly. They got a brand new baby boy, their first. So I'm a great uncle. Whether I'm great or not, that's <laughs> not I'm a great uncle. Title. I never, <laughs> she said, little James, listen to Clear Skies and wake up and give me Jesus. You know, going to church, getting ready for church this morning. He's only four months old, you know, and I said, oh my gosh. stop playing you know, those songs of faith and classical songs. I said, you never know how that's forming their mm -hmm. creativity inside them, you know? So yeah, being outside, Joseph has always been a, a, a spiritual thing for me. I, I, I don't want to go too deep with that, but uh, I hear God. Yeah. I hear God. And um, I know, and I know in a way I can't explain that, uh, that he's smiling on me. Mm -hmm. And when you feel the smile of God on you, you're able to forgive everybody else. And, and the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Mm -hmm. All the stupid things you've done or even thought. And uh, that happens. Yeah. It's it does. That's, it's beautiful, Ernie. And I think that when, when we're outside, it gives us a tranquility to be more open-minded, which is why I think, I'm the same way. I, I tend to be more sensitive to God speaking into my life when I'm somewhere at peace and outside. I feel that. And uh, I appreciate you again taking time to be with us. This is a Valentine's Day, Ernie. So we want to say happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. And I want to learn a little bit about your sweetheart. A lot of a lot of gospel music fans, they know Ernie Haas, but tell us about that better half. Absolutely. Lisa Yance. Met her when I moved up here to Stowe in April of 1990. Um, our love story started with her, uh, both of us, thinking that we had found the the right person. Okay. Having your heart handed right back to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we found each other um, because I moved up here to join the cathedrals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to eat dinner one night with the aunt's family. And, of course, Lisa was there. And. Man, we just started talking like she's she was a couple years older than 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 me, and it still is. <laughs> I didn't know I she, it. <laughs> and you've never caught up. <laughs> but uh, it was our love story started uh, after dinner, sitting on the couch, going through a photo album book. You know, before iPhotos and a gallery like that, right. you, know, you put photos in paper photos in a photo album. So they were showing me photo albums of their family and their vacations and of course being a huge cathedral fan you know it's just a look behind the curtain to see the real Jans family to see how much they adored him mm. 
and their mother, Clara. But it wasn't about music. It was just about family, you know? And so we our, our love story started as friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, I tell you what, if I could give any advice to anybody out there who's fallen in love, yeah, there's that chemical reaction. Yeah, there's that attraction. Yeah, there's all of that great stuff that comes that God created and it's all good. But boy, if you if you can find a friend mm. and, and and in the end, you know, it's just not good for a person to be alone. And so God created a helpmate. And so I'm just thankful 32 years later, uh, here we are, just two old friends wondering as soon as this interview is over with where we're going to go eat. <laughs> That's an important question. Um, what yes. would you say has, has, uh, well, just give us one of the incredible qualities that Lisa has that helps you with your, the ministry side of your life. I apologize to her a lot because I, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. She didn't sign up for this. She married me because she just, for some reason, she loved me and we were friends. But um, marrying a, a gospel tenor singer, that wasn't in her wheelhouse. Then signing up to the signature sound experience, the 20 years of challenges and all the things that we do behind the scenes mm -hmm. upstairs right now in the office and dealing with stuff. And uh, the stuff always happens and God always gives us the breakthrough and there's always grace for the moment. But you ask what the quality is. She is a faithful, loyal uh, friend. She's a lot like her mama, just quiet behind the scenes, doesn't want ever to be noticed. And she did not sign up for this. Uh, so this is not about signature sound or the singing news top 50. You know, okay. Right. She's a loyal helpmate, and there would not be, not only Sing Sound, there would not be me. Everything that I've written, I've done, uh, counseled people, or anything life-giving that's happened mm -hmm. with my life mm. because of her. And so uh, I used to hear, when I was young, I used to hear guys talk about their wife that way, and I'm like, what a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> man up, right. man up you know and so you caught me on a day when my heart's just open and i'm outside and i'm a little tired from the road this weekend so um valentine's day is a chance for all of us to uh there's and it's back to that smile from god you know mm -hmm. be told for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son you can be told but love can't be told it has to be shown and god showed his love mm -hmm. and he demonstrated his love through his son jesus and so uh tell somebody you love them this valentine's day but most importantly show them mm -hmm. and god will give you the the wisdom to show them in a way that makes it very very real and personal to them and the magic that happens there mm -hmm. It's that's that's part of the derivative of God creating in the first place. Yeah, right, so right. Show love, show love, and be loved. Hmm. Amen. Let's take an I mean, I, I'm gonna tell you what, we're passing the plate. That, that'll we're passing the plate. <laughs> what a beautiful tribute to to your wife. Um, an emotional tribute to her and what she means to you. Thank you this for sharing with us. This was us last week talking about being outside. Mm-hmm. Got a little spot in Panama City. Let's see. Can you see that? Oh, yes. That's me and her. Oh, wow. Watching the sun go down together. So That, that doesn't get old. No. <laughs> is, uh, is, is that emotion that you just described, is that part of what led you to record Decades of Love as oh. a signature sound? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I probably would have been hesitant to do that 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, this was, you know, and, and when the pandemic happened and we were unemployed for a year, 
you know, two good things happened. The Friday night sing that mm -hmm. telecast that we do was out born out of that. And then decades of love. And I, I joke with people on the stage when I'm setting up the songs and like, you know, we spent a whole year with our wives and I'm still, I'm here to, re to report to you. We're all still very married. <laughs> <laughs> leaving once a week to go sing, make for a healthy relationship. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how that started. I told the guys, I said, let's just record a couple of love songs for our mm -hmm. wives and let's give that to them for putting up with us. It's just it's a surprise. And yeah. once we got in the studio, we just, we, we never turned the faucet off. We just kept recording and recording and end up 29 songs, two mm -hmm. hours worth of music. And then, of course, in my mind, you know, I'm like, I sing Southern gospel music unapologetically. That's who I am. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of times that churches and events, performing arts centers, you know, they're looking for something a little different. Mm -hmm. And so we've been able, we just last weekend, we had a, an amazing two nights of decades of love shows. And uh, we, next week we got a church, first Presbyterian church in Bonita Springs, Florida, Word of Life in Hudson, Florida. Uh, they're saying, hey, let's do a, a dinner theater. Let's do a dinner and you sing some of these love songs. And I uh, yeah, there's, that's a great, my pastor told me when I was thinking about recording, I, I said, what about some of our brothers and sisters who were like, what are you doing? Going, you going secular on me or <laughs> right? Because when have you ever worried about what people think? <laughs> I said, no, I do, I do. I don't, you know, I do care. He said, when you celebrate any fest mm. of God's love, mm -hmm. you're celebrating God. Wow. And what, we left the stage last week and it was so emotional, so good. And I told the guys backstage, I looked at them, I said, you know, this isn't a gospel show, but our gospel shows. That, oh, I love that. Everywhere we go. Oh, I love that. This isn't a gospel show, but the gospel shows. I think, and I think these songs are so pure and good that you have on here anyway on the record. Um, just looking through this long list, it turned, it went from a couple of songs to a lot of songs uh, pretty quick, didn't it? It did. And then thankfully, you know, I have a great team uh, that I, you know, I don't make unilateral decisions. Mm -hmm. you know, eventually the buck stops here as far as yes or no. But, you know, I sat down with Wayne Hahn. I sat down with a couple of musician friends of mine and I said, mm -hmm. this thing's growing on us too fast and I'm spending a lot of money. What What is the best way to present this to our people? Mm -hmm. And um Wayne said, why don't you just cover two or three songs of each decade? And then by that time, we'd already covered so many of the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. And and then it was my mom and dad. My mom and dad were, oh, and tell me another love story. Huh. Yeah. A whole other uh, podcast. But uh, when they met, then just shortly thereafter, here came Ernie and uh, totally unplanned. And, uh, my dad and mom have been after me for years. Hey, sing some songs from our generation, which is the fifties and sixties. Mm -hmm. And so my dad's been after me to do that. So I said, well, let's throw some fifties and sixties on there. And then my guys are younger than me. They're like, we're, we're from the nineties. Yeah. Our favorite love song. My wife doesn't know any of these songs we recorded. So let's cover something from the, maybe the eighties and nineties. And so that's what happened. And then we're just sitting around the couch one night. Wayne and I were after, after a recording session. And it was his idea. He said, decades of love. I said, that's what this is. Wow. So we covered a, a whole century, 1920, all the way to 2020. Yeah. Wow. It was work. And it's such a great record. Uh, you know, my wife is, she, she is like me. We love uh, many genres and styles of music but she feels like she was born in the wrong era <laughs> if she if she could have lived at downtown abbey she would have been just fine but uh so the further back you go with music the more that she loves it and uh, listening to this record was really good for her and she doesn't uh, spend a whole lot of time bragging on you know or spending a lot of time listening to the music that I have to play all the time on the radio. You know, she hears enough of it. What I mean as far as enjoyment or going on a ride or we got a road trip, 
but we listened to this, uh, we listened to your record intentionally and she loved it. And uh, it, it's because of that, the depth of those decades and that music mm -hmm. that rather spoke to us personally in our era yeah. or it, the music styling or the, the lyric uh, really reached out and touched us. There were some songs in here that I felt like I heard for the first time, but I've heard them a thousand times. And so good job on this record. Well, you just said exactly what my mom and dad do. They go sit on the patio each night and it's, it's a two hour recording. It's two, two yeah. CDs. It's two hours worth of music. And they sit there for two hours and they, they have their little, you know, refreshments and they just reminisce. Yeah. Actually, one of the songs we recorded is reminiscing from the seventies from little river band. Yeah. Um, and there isn't, you know, for all of the singing news, fans out there there isn't any song that has anything that would not uh oh. be appropriate for mixed company you know that that's we, right we're very that's intentional right. with which songs we did choose that honored commitment and god's love and, and demonstrated that's through right. a romantic love and so yeah i would would you telling me that you intentionally do that with your wife mm. that thrills me and what what we got to remember the first love songs are in the Bible. The whole book of Proverbs and Psalms, those are all, those are all, we just don't know the music. Those are all songs. And so there's a lot of love songs, that, especially in Proverbs. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. I think that this is a record that all of us at Singing News, without a doubt, by the way, highly recommend and we endorse it. So don't wow. let the Decades of Love title scare you the, these are all pure um, songs that all of you would all of you would love and it's great arrangement of course we we can't say enough about Wayne Hahn and his contribution to gospel music on so many levels as a writer um, as a producer as an arranger a performer he, he's fantastic and I know you've had a lifelong relationship with him so what, what a great record and what a great journey from the start to the finish of this record I want to, again, uh, let everyone know you're listening to us on Singing News Radio, or you may be watching this on our social media, but I'm with Ernie Haas, and we're talking about the Decades of Love album. I, I reached out to Ernie. He was so gracious to be on to talk about this for our Valentine's Day, and there, if, if, you're, just, if you're just watching this or just listening, make sure to revisit this interview because there's some there's some nuggets in here that you don't want to miss. Ernie, a lot going on with Signature Sound. Uh, you've got a a fan event that's coming up, I believe, uh, here in a couple of months, isn't it? Our Signature Sound fan retreat. We've this will be the 13th, 12th or 13th year for it. And it's in the beautiful uh, village of Sugar Creek, Ohio. Beautiful Amish country beautiful Ohio star theater, four days, four nights, the guys, their wives and kids. And it's just a chance to, to meet with all of the people um, and to hang out. You know, the one thing about our concerts is afterwards, the afterglow, it's just hard to say goodbye, but it's late and we got to go to the next city. This is a chance for us to hang out. And I, and I sell it. I sound like I'm selling it, but this is actually what happens. We get up in the morning. We look like this. I got my calves thing on we walk around in our shorts and we eat breakfast together then we do a worship service to, together mm -hmm. then we eat lunch together and then we go back into the Ohio Star Theater and we do games and karaoke and trivia and then we do dinner we eat together and then we put our suits on and we do a two-hour concert and then after the concert we go right out to the common area and we do a campfire and we roast marshmallows and hot dogs and we just sit around and just hang out together till about midnight. Do that for four days in a row. And uh, so what what I tell everybody is we we will grow in the Lord yeah. and hard. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of singing, a lot of worshiping, and a lot of eating of that great Amish oh, cook. What a cool event, Ernie. That that man, you you just you you hear of an event like that, uh, a retreat like that, and you just wish that. You, you you wish that was out there more in this industry. I think it would be good for people to take take what you're doing and apply it to their own. 
but it, this is uh, that's important to you, isn't it? I, you put this together because you want the fans to know, hey, we we love you, and this is how much you mean to us. We want to have this retreat. We want to design it to say in, in a way to say thank you. It was a it was a way for us. I think the world needs more retreats, mm-hmm. and so you know. I can't change the world, but I can influence the people around me. Yes. So I can, I can at least do that. And so when we started, it was like, there's probably four or 500 people that will come. And uh, at first, maybe they just thought it was cool to hang out with, with us. I think very quickly they saw this is not, and I hate the word fan. This is a family. You know, we've, we, we have grown this signature sound experience I know these people. Uh, I I know their heartaches. I know their prayer requests. Um, they know ours, and uh, and so it's just a chance for us to be together, and make new memories together, and you know to have communion that sacred Sunday morning when we when we take the the wine and the bread and we remember what the Lord did for us to bring us together to make us one. Mm. Um, it is the most favorite thing that I do. It's the most exhausting thing that we do. It takes me a couple of weeks to recover from it. That's sad. That's but sad. Uh, oh, man, if I could do that, if I could do that every week, I would. I would. I would stop touring on tour buses and just do twelve retreats a year in different places. Yeah. Uh, how much I believe in what what happens. And then in in June, two thousand nineteen, the last day of our retreat, I said this, Joseph. If I could just somehow put what happens here on TV, um, I think it would just change the world. And and I didn't know what I was saying. And then COVID happened. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, we know I don't have to wait around for Fox or CNN or NBC or anybody to, to offer me a TV show. I got YouTube. I got Facebook. So let's just make it. So we did. And then that's that Friday night sing experience that we're encountering even again right now um on our youtube and facebook every friday is because of the retreat Mm. you didn't you didn't know what you said was uh seemed prophetic at the time uh honestly but um i remember though when when you started putting those out on fridays and uh i like you we were stuck inside most of the time if you couldn't get out it it was uncomfortable. You felt um, that you know media had whether uh, whether it was masks or uh, people you know even wearing my mask. You're looking around and thinking, what? Where are we? You know this is just so so emotional. And so even when you were out, you didn't feel like you were out. Yeah. And, you know, and places closed down, and you opened up your door. Uh, through social media, which is one of the great tools of social media is to be able to to communicate in a positive way. And I remember watching those and looking forward to them, as I know, obviously, uh, hundreds of thousands of other millions of other people have over time. So um, thank God for the modern technology yes. when it's used uh, when it when it's used for good. let me tell let me tell people this because I think this is important. Um, as I sit here on this patio out back, there, my guy said to me this weekend, one one of my guys, because I hadn't opened my, up my heart about something, and he's, he goes, well, I would never have guessed you would struggle with that fear. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, don't, you know, don't take my leadership skills or whatever as a as a cover mm-hmm. that I'm not fearful. And I just want to say to people, you're, there are people sitting in their living room right now or listening right now, and there is a fear, there is a barrier that's going on right there. And I, all I can tell you is keep pressing on, keep on keeping on, like the song says, because past past that is something really, really special. And... It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. But yet it is God interacting with our human effort. 
And so many people stop right there at that barrier. And that barrier should be a signal. Like if if a, if a siren came by right now, a car, I mean, a cop or a fire truck, and you hear a siren, you know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's that's a signal. That barrier is nothing but a signal that there that that can become a building block to something really wonderful in your life. That's how God works. He doesn't work on mountaintop experiences. He works in building your faith, just like a weight builds that muscle. You need that weight, need that tension. Yes. I don't understand the mystery of it all. I'm just telling you, I'm sitting here in the space where I wrestled with Friday night saying, I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it looked like. It was a barrier in my mind, but you keep pressing on and God gives you wisdom and grace day by day. Mm -hmm. And then something wonderful is on the other side of it. So keep pressing on, keep on keeping on, keep trusting, keep showing up every day. Just show up and, and trust God with the process and don't let that barrier get in, get in the way of something beautiful that God wants to do. And he will get the glory. He will get the honor. Um, you may have somebody interview you along the way and say, Hey, that was a fun thing. Well, let me tell you, that wasn't me. That was God in me and through me, but yeah. yet I had to, I had to show up. So, yeah. Yeah. um, I think somebody needs to hear that today. Mm, man. I, um, <clears throat> let me pray lord thank you for this day thank you for breath in our lungs thank you for a beating heart lord thank you for barriers that uh, you care enough about our um being made in the image of you, our Christ likeness, more than you care about us being comfortable sitting around with our feet propped up and everything okay. Lord, don't understand how all that works, but I do know that you are working and you are going to redeem this creation that you've created, this beautiful creation that's fallen, broken, but yet you love it enough that you died to redeem us that were made in your image in this world that you so wonderfully created and allowed us to cultivate, Lord. So for everybody who's listening right now, Lord, we thank you for each precious soul, those who love Southern gospel music, this, this little thing that we, uh, in the big old world with all the different kinds of music, Lord, we thank you for Southern gospel music. We thank you for how it preaches and sings to us and reaches us in some ways that, other things will never reach us, Lord. So we thank you for harmony. We thank you for for all the years. And Lord, we just trust you the future. Lord, we don't know what it is. We're all a little scared, I bet. Mm -hmm. But uh, Lord, we know that you have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Joseph. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for him showing up every day. And thank you for singing news, Lord. We thank you for our friends. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ernie, thank you so much for uh, for spending time. And uh, I, think, um, I think I needed this. Um, I needed this myself. And I appreciate you for being sensitive. And happy Valentine's Day, my friend, and, and to you and Lisa. And... Uh, uh, excited to hear the music throughout the day from the decades of love on Valentine's Day here on Singing News Radio. And make sure to go to ErnieHaas.com. Um, it's H-A-A-S-E. Don't forget that E at the end. Don't, don't forget think, the two A's either. <laughs> or the two A's. Uh, ErnieHaas.com. You'll get all the information there. You can order their music. You can also stream it anywhere where you stream your favorite music. Ernie, thank you again for being here and spending time with us. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for taking time to interview me this way. Uh, this probably would have never happened 20 years ago like this. So right. you, right. and as one of the songs on Decades of Love says, shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. And uh, things will be much better if you only will. <laughs> Ernie Haas. Ernie Haas' signature sound. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you.